Um, so uh, good evening. No, oh, Yazin, good evening. <laughs> uh, greetings to everybody. Greetings, my brothers and sisters, um, fellow healers, as well as Bantana Bedlozi, Bantabatala, Bokogona Bonkul. So today's session um, for the Healing Sunday series, we will be discussing time onion, sage, kine, and alu. So um, just to get into, if, if you have any questions, please do share your questions on the chats. And then if you have a, additional information that you would want to share, uh, please do share the information on the, on, on, the, on the chat session. This session is our session, and it's meant to be an interactive session where we educate each other about the proper usage of herbs. So just to get on to things, I will start sharing my screen for today's um, Let me just start sharing my screen. Then, can, are you able to see my screen? I'm cool. Yes, go. The perfect. Um, Kulu, do we have any any anybody on the um, what's this that has been admitted uh, as a as a panelist member already? Yes. I think Kuko Kolindela no mam kuni ya. Umamlin umamlindela no retadi. Yes. Okay. Seems here I am able to actually allow them to talk via audio regardless of whether they are attendees so i just need to note them when they raise their hands so the first tab that we are going to discuss onion so this is um when we discuss onion ne, the first thing that you can say it's not what can it do ne? It's what can it not do? <laughs> because this herb is, um, it does a lot of things, you know? And there's, there's some other myths that uh, surround this, this herb. And there's also some facts that, that are available. So I think when we start discussing herbs um, in detail, uh, we might want to start talking about this herb and not just only this herb, this herb as well as igalik, I think you they are a gift from Umdali because the amount of e, the stuff that it can do, being an antibacterial as well as being an anti-inflammatory agent, having uh, anti-inflammatory agents, it's quite it's 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 quite a it's quite a lot. Yeah, this is a gift from um, Umvelinang. So um, there's a lot of species in terms of e onion. Um, but the most common uh, uh, species that is used uh, across the world globally, it's called the Allium sepa. So that's why I said we need to have a discussion about the Allium, uh, that those species, because uh, garlic as well belongs under the Allium, Allium family. And at some point, it would be beneficial for us to actually go into details in terms of what this what this family of plants is able to do in terms of anti being an antibacterial and being um, an anti-inflammatory agent. So the Allium sepa is this one, it's the most commonly used um, on, on onion or in that family. And one day we'll get into details about the other species. So this onion is rich in vitamins. Um, I just listed a, a two from, from from that but it's quite a lengthy list list so the ones that i listed are the ones that are quite potent they're very high in when you look at the chemical composition of the onion these ones are very high vitamin c and and vitamin b9 this the, the very onion is very rich in in terms of that it also contains uh carbohydrates your, your sugars um there's a number of types of sugars that the onion actually contains 
but <clears throat> sorry but due to time constraints um i didn't want us to dwell too much on in terms of that um it also contains minerals um one of them being uh, potassium and i saw somewhere in some text that it says that um potassium is actually um theo what's this no 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 it's not it we'll get into that later so it's one of the things that actually make you cry when you peel the onion i'm not sure if there's any truth into that um but uh, when we discuss this in details you should examine that and it also contains proteins as well so yeah what can onion be used for so uh onions can be used for ear aches so how how that actually works is that you would want to heat your onion and then how how you would heat it so there have been suggestions né? um that you can slightly um what's this braise it not even braise it like slightly fry it on a pan using um oil but you don't have to like it you, you're not cooking it so it's just to make it warm and then wrap the onion on the cloth as well as uh, and then put it on your on top of the ear and then you can put it in for 30 to 40 you can leave it there for 30 to 40 minutes 45 minutes or you can even even leave it longer but reheating the onion as it cools down it's been very it's been found to be very helpful in terms of um uh, relieving ear aches um is I, I, I remember you once discussed something about um, how you manage ear aches. Um, is, was it the same method that you use or is it slightly different method? It's a different method. I was using aloe instead of onion. Oh, were yeah. you using the same technique? Same technique. Uh, well, it's different in this sense. Would say you, you heat the... The, the, the leaf, the actual uh, uh, aloe leaf. And then you squeeze that, that juice into a container. Then you let it cool down and uh, you then drip it a few drops on, in each ear, so like three drops per ear. And that was it. I think it's a good thing that we're also discussing Elu. Maybe you can share some of <laughs> the, that knowledge with us. <laughs> um so alu is uh, no um sorry uh, onions are quite also are quite good as well for treatment of colds and flu so alu is one of the key ingredients of a, a what's this a remedy called fire cider so i've shared the the actual recipe on the slides and i'll circulate the because it requires a lot of ingredients um, so I'll sh I've included the the recipe on uh, on the slides, and I will sh I'll circulate the slides once the session is over. So onion is one of the key ingredients when preparing fire cider, and so it also the fire cider. You also use some of the other ingredients that we're gonna discuss a bit later on. One of them being uh, kind 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 pepper. And I think one of the other ingredients for preparing fire cider is garlic as well. I think we had discussed the garlic uh, on one of the other sessions where we, where, that we had uh, previously. So yeah, the fire cider recipe is on the slides. Um, so what you do, you prepare your fire cider and then you put it on your, you refrigerate it. And the preparation method is also contained in the sliders. I'm not gonna go into details with that. Um, and then once you've prepared your, your fire cider, you refrigerate it. And once you start feeling your fluish symptoms, ideally, so you'd want to prepare this before you start even feeling fluish because you can refrigerate this. Um, uh, you can refrigerate this, this remedy. And then once you start feeling the flu, uh, fluish symptoms, then you can start taking your fire cider. Um, you would take it like you would your, your, your cough mixture um, it's throughout the day when you start feeling a bit fluish. So yeah, and then one of the uses for um, onion is it, it can be used for skin treatment. So it has been found to be very helpful in terms of 
uh, reducing the appearance of stretch marks as well as scars. So if you use an ointment, I on the last session we discussed in terms of how you prepare an ointment. If you use an ointment or a gel, we haven't discussed the preparation of a gel yet. And I think um, in the future we might need to touch on, on that in terms of how we prepare gels. Um, if you use an ointment or a gel that contains onion extracts, it's very helpful in terms of reducing the appearance of stretch marks and scars. So um, another remedy, another use for eam onion is treatment of allergies. So this is, um, you can use onions to treat some, it's not all allergies, but you can use on, onions to treat um, allergies as well. Uh, I'm not sure if there's any questions or additional comments in terms of the um, uses or some of the content that we've just discussed or addition yeah questions or additional info um so far goko there are no questions on my side i don't know uh, oh oh um, 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 um Lina. Would yeah, Dr. Lena would like to uh, go ahead, Doctor. Um, good morning. I don't know if you can hear me. I can hear you, Doctor. You can. Yes. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I just wanted to say I also use onions for young ladies who just started menstruating and have bad clots and bad period pains. So what I usually ask the parents to do is slice some onion, put it in a bucket of warm water, not hot water, warm water. Let them sit, get up, sit, get up. It helps to actually get the blood flowing and the clots dropping out because um, they can be very painful and they don't know what to do. And then I also do ask them to do to boil um, the onion um, with a bit of garlic um, and ginger because one is an anti-inflammatory and the other one is a biotic. So when you have that combination, it also helps ease the pain and makes the, the, the period flow um, better. So it's, it's something that it's not a once off. They would have to do it maybe twice a day. And if they have severe period pains, they would do it three times a day. So it just helps um, with the clots coming out more easier, um, especially when they're starting uh, womanhood. That's all. That's actually quite interesting, um, considering that uh, garlic and ginger are blood thinners. It's, yes, it's, but when you combine them and you boil them, um, they help to push the clots out. Mm. Uh, as you say, blood thinners, the clots are thick. Mm, mm. So they struggle um, when those clots have to come out and then the pain is severe. So when they start drinking and um, steaming with it, it makes it easier for it to come out. Yeah. May, may, ladies, may I ask something? Um, uh, when, when we, okay, I, 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 I understand this type of, of, of remedy um, when it is required, but going forward, do we not perhaps look at the diet um, that our young women consume uh, so as to alleviate these problems uh, more permanently? You're right. It's both the diet, but also the body clock. Um, and the environment, doctor, because I've seen and the environment, here. yes. Because um, remember the food, now a lot of kids are eating GMO food instead of organic food. And that is what causes a lot of infertility in young women and women these days. That is what causes cancer. And that is what, I mean, uh, period pains and missing your period and at a young age 
that's already a sign of infertility. So the food is, is a major part, but also the body clock. Um, in the olden days, our parents would say, you don't wake up after the sun has risen. There was a reason for that. So your body has to know when to wake up, when to sleep. They sleep late. They're always on technology. That also affects. So it's another, um, there's a number of underlying issues in terms of why we experiencing all of these things as people. I think I'm guilty of sleeping late. I think Aretha, I'm not sure if I <laughs> raised her hand. May, may, yeah. Ooh, and, 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 and Aretha, sorry. Yeah. Aretha. I'm trying to get the name. Sorry, how do I put my hand off? And Aretha um, has, uh, has, has raised a hand. Um, go ahead, Anaritha. I just need her to unmute so she can talk. Okay. Um, I need to unmute her. I think. All right. Yeah. Hello. There we go. Yes. There we go. Um, I couldn't find the mute button, so I figured that you guys needed to unmute me. Um, but I wanted to comment on um, the onions and uh, period pain. Um, Ubaba just uh, commented and asked if there is anything that could be done in terms of um, diet. And uh, I've seen in my family, not only myself, but even my sisters and my mother and all that, they also have had, uh, they also have period pain problems. And I've, I've since seen or found that this is something that could be hereditary. So sometimes I'm not dismissing that diet doesn't work. It's something that needs to be actually looked into and see what kind of foods people can eat. But you also find that even when you're on your period, the symptoms differ. They differ uh, from person to person. So one person may have an appetite to actually eat and one person may not even want to see food. I grew up and I didn't want to see food when I was sick. My father had, to, my father is the one who actually used to come and back from work, cook soup for me, uh, onion soup, like they're saying, mushroom soup as well. And that's what I would drink, or even tomato soup, but usually um, onion and mushroom soup. And that is what I would drink. Um, uh, and that's what I would put into my system. But other than that, I used to find that drinking water, using a water press, uh, a hot water press uh, on at the bottom of my feet and also um, on the, uh, on, at the back, on my back rather, would help. I've, uh, my mother used to tell me that, you know, with period pain, uh, in Shona, we call it chando, which is the cold. If you step on the ground without, uh, without shoes, if you let the cold come in, uh, into your body from your feet because it directly affects your womb, that's, uh, would, that would aggravate um, period pain. So besides only drinking a lot of water and taking all these remedies, there is also the element of heat to actually help with, the, uh, with, uh, with clots and uh, alleviating pain. So putting water presses under your feet, putting them on your back, on your lower back, and literally just taking a steam shower uh, is something that could be looked into to help people with period pain um, together with the remedies that you guys are talking about. I've also seen that, seen that cold does play a, um, um, a major influence in terms of the period pain with my, personally with, with me. I'm not sure how other people have experienced that, but for me, cold has played um, a, a major role in terms in terms of that. Um, okay. What are the side effects? Um, so for for using um, onions. So people who are allergic to celery or any... Um... Sorry, um, sorry, uh, Queen, just, just a second. Uh, oh, Gokuri Tabila has just raised her hand. Um, okay. Yeah, go ahead, Gokuri. Is 
is, is she not maybe having audio problems? Because it seems like there's some form of sound trying to come out. Gogori Tabile? Okay, may I ask that you proceed and uh, then is she, uh, we've got her a little bit, we've got her a little bit. Go ahead, Gokri. I can hear a bit of a background noise. I'm not sure whether it's coming from her. Yeah, it was. I think she's she's got. Apologies, Makosi. Apologies. I'm driving. If you can't hear me properly, let, then let me let me re refrain from commenting. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, she's she's. We've just heard that she's <laughs> driving. Um, which which. Uh, you know, I I always feel cheated when when we can't get. Uh, comments because it drops us of people's thoughts and and we want to understand what people have to say. So yeah, um, perhaps if she can stop for for at least fifteen minutes, so she can share with us. If you can hear me, Gokri, stop for at least fifteen minutes. So we we'd like to capture your thoughts, please. Thank you, Marcosi. I'll comment at the end. It's okay. Thank you. Hello, you may proceed. Um, so, what are the side effects for for onions? Um, they slow they slow down blood clotting. So, if you if you're suffering from um, a disease that um, prevents your your blood from from clotting, you you may experience a bit of problems when you use um, um, onions. And then if you're a person who's allergic to any herb in the, in, in, in the family, onion, you might want to also use uh, onions with precautions. And then if you are a person that keeps dogs, you, <laughs> this, is, this is quite sad. If you're a person that actually keeps dogs, dogs are allergic to, to, to onions. You know, because they the onions they com they contain um, a chemical that causes the animals to have hemolytic anemia, in a sense that so it is the ability to to create uh, blood red blood cells. So you, we all are aware that red blood cells that transport oxygen oxygen throughout the rest of, of 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 your body. So blood cells in that instance, red blood cells get destroyed at a faster rate that they, that they're being uh, created. So it's almost like it, it deprives them of uh, having oxygen within within their body. That's the best way I, I know how to explain it. That's how it makes sense to me in terms of what hemolytic anemia. But if there's somebody who knows. Uh, uh, a better, a better, what's this? A better explanation, which is more understandable to everybody else. Yeah, um, they can please do share share in terms of how, how what what that actually does to 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 canines and cats as well. So if you've got uh, pets, canines and cats, you you want to uh, be very cautious when it comes to onion and them being exposed to it. Um, so we're going to move on to the next herb. If there's anybody who wants to add in terms of what we've said. Oh, another thing that I found out. Um, <laughs> so there was a research that was actually conducted on onions. Apparently, onions and garlic, the waste products, so they have a chemical that you can use them to clean up um, um, a metal, metal uh, poison with it. Yeah. And it's been reported that it also is very helpful in terms of for cyanide poisoning as well. Um, I haven't really dug into that research quite well to be able to speak on that. So when you see people using onions to clean their bra stands, there's actually a science behind that. <laughs> it's very helpful in terms of eliminating some of the germs 
and the poisons that actually exist on steel steel metal so yeah there's a science to 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 that they're not just creating stuff in their own heads and whatnot so yeah and i i do remember as a child that um my grandmother used to use onion uh, to clean a wound that where you if you had been maybe stepped on a nail or an old rusted nail um my grandmother used to use uh, onion uh, to actually clean that and i think it's related to the fact that the onion can actually clean some of these uh, uh poisons from the from from the from a surface or from a, a place yeah I'm not sure if we have somebody who, who can, because for me, it was quite fascinating to find that out, that it's actually capable of doing that. So the next herb that we're going to discuss is the thyme. Uh, so um, I think we can discuss the onion until, yeah, until sunset and sunrise. Uh, but uh, due to time limitations, we're going to move on to the to the next uh, to the next step, which is thyme. So thyme, just like got just like lemon balm and rosemary, is part of the mint family. Um, thyme is rich in vitamin A and vitamin uh, C. So I don't know. This is a nice to know, but thyme was used in ancient Egypt as incense. Um, it does smell nice anyway. So it was also used for em the embalming pr process. Uh, so the common, there's many variations in terms of thyme, but the, what's this, the one that we're going to talk about today is the common garden thyme, which is the one that you saw on the picture be before. All right. What did I do? Okay, this, this, this species of thyme. Um, so thyme can be used for respiratory um, uh, uh, diseases, um, like your coughs. So um, you can make it an infusion. Um, you can make it a, an infusion uh, and you can use it uh, to treat some respiratory uh, illnesses. You can also use thyme um, for oral hygiene. Like if you've got uh, oral thrush, you can use um, a, a thyme. So if you've if you've already prepared a tincture, a thyme tincture, you might want to mix that with uh, with water and uh, gurgle with it for 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 treating oral oral uh, what's this oral thrush. The reason you know what it, thyme just like mint when it's when it's turned into a when it's turned into a tincture, it's it you can't you can't take it as is because it's quite potent and you you might i don't know how to put this you can't just apply thyme or like most of the herbs in the mint family you can't just apply them on the on the skin because it might actually burn you because they're quite potent and they're very dangerous and they must be handled with care with care hence you need to mix it in a in water and i think another thing that we also need to remember is that um medicine doesn't work in, based on quantity uh, it, medicine doesn't work based on quantity you know sometimes it's the it's it's like it's not like you can say the more you put in the more it will help you sometimes a tiny drop is just as effective you, it's 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 enough you know and then thyme has been uh, so there's a gland called the thymus gland it's located here i'm not sure if you can if everybody can see me, me my on the video it's located here just in between your uh, your your lungs um in between your lungs so the thymus gland is responsible for development of t cells so t cells are those cells that uh actually very uh, play a key role in on your immune system and um, so thyme the rubbing of thyme on that area here and that area um, has been found to be very useful in terms of uh, stimulating that glands activities um, which in turn will, will result in boosting your immune system in in some way um, I'm not sure if I articulated that correctly, but if there's any questions in relations to that, please do um, please do share uh, 
please do, do feel free to ask or share some of your um your what's this your your experiences so you can for purposes of that okay dr lina has raised her hand oh hi um just to add on to what you said regarding time um with cops um i i i i've used thyme um, as a bronchodilator and I use it for people who are asthmatic but I'm not using it in isolation so for kids I would ask the parents if they're far from me if they do have access to thyme as well as um, marijuana to actually mix the two um, for bad coughs and choking and also to help the kid to sleep um, because kids would, wouldn't would sleep because they're coughing so much and throwing up and all of that. So because it has antiseptic uh, properties, it is, it's, it's, it helps. Um, and it also helps as a decongestant. And then I've also used thyme for people who have liver problems, but I don't use it in isolation. Again, I would use thyme together with dandelion um, because of the properties it has to cleanse the liver um, and then the dandelion will cleanse the liver and the kidney so because it's vital organs you can't look after one and not the other so you kind of balance um, that so um, um, when you spoke about oral hygiene um, thyme together with um, fenugreek seeds. They're very good if you've got bleeding gums, but also for people who have bad breath from bleeding gums. Because blood um, often will give you a, a certain smell in the mouth. So when you rinse your mouth or you gargle with that combination, um, for a number of days, it's not a once-off. It, it has an, a good effect. My son used to have bad gum problems. And when I started using fenugreek seed together with thyme, it actually helped because he wouldn't play with other kids because they would say his breath smells bad. And it did because of the blood. So yeah, that's what I wanted to add. And that can be very quite traumatic for, for kids. Um, there was a question on the um, when you spoke of the treatment of asthma uh, and as well as coughs um, in terms of how do you then how do you prepare it for per, for that purpose that question came from um, Kulumens. oh okay I, I either make a, a I make a tincture or I make a tea. But like I say, it's a combination of herbs. I don't just use thyme. But for kids, like kids, let's say um, the child is three months. I wouldn't put other herbs. It will just be a bit of marijuana and thyme, a little bit of it. The parents will boil it. And then when it starts looking oily, that's when they take it off the stove. And then it will be a, um, administered uh, a teaspoon every um, three hours. So when the child starts sweating out the fever and they stop coughing, then you decrease the dosage. And then for adults, it would be a spoon. So you, you either boil it into a tea or you um, make it into a tincture. And I make my tinctures slightly different, is either I'll use fruit vinaigrette or I'll use alcohol um, to extract that over a period of days. And then I bottle that in a brown bottle and then they can use the drops. So it will either be five drops for kids with a bit of water or it will be 10 drops for adults with a bit of water. Um, Thank you so much, Doctor. I was about to ask in terms of, of the tincture, which which base you use, because I remember when we were discussing uh, preparation methods, 
and we discussed tincture. Uh, some people don't really like alcohol-based tinctures. So for those who don't like alcohol-based tinctures, um, I think it would be beneficial for them to, to use the vinegar-based tincture. Would it also work if, it, if it's prepared in a, in a glycerin-based tincture? I think it would. I just have not tried it. I've only tried those two methods because those were the ones that I was exposed to at school. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, doctor, for the con for your contribution. Okay. Before, before the doctor goes, um, I just want to, to find out, uh, we, 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 she talked about bad breath. Let me phrase my question this way: Is is are we talking halitosis? And if we are talking halitosis, is this then a cure for halitosis, both in young people and in adults? Um, I wouldn't call it a cure. Halitosis is deeper than that. It's not in the mouth. It's actually in your gut. So okay. that 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 with that which comes out. Um, so what you need to do with someone with halitosis, we make a combination of herbs to actually deal with um, what the gut couldn't take out or take down. So you have to kind of, um, whew, I need to find the words for it. I can't say a blood purifier, but it is something that needs to clean the gut system um, and also part of the um, intestine because it is that that has not been properly digested um, that comes out because it smells rotten. Mm. I'm sorry to use that word, but that's how it is. So you need to kind of deal with that. So with my son, it was gum disease. So with halitosis, you actually need to treat the person's gut and also help the intestine to break down all the food because you might find they have very little acid in their intestine that is not breaking food properly hence the food comes up in that smell which you now call halitosis i don't know if that makes sense yeah yeah you know how you've explained it ne? it's it's it actually explains a lot of things because some people just think that you're not drinking enough water or it's like something that you can just cure that easily and how you've just explained it in terms of it being much deeper than just activities that are actually happening in your mouth it's not something that you can just brush away it, you need to work the root cause of why where that breath is that big breath is actually coming from and it's not something that you can just take lightly and treat the symptom as opposed to the actual problem because the bad breath is a symptom it's not the actual problem but it's, it's a symptom when you look at it in, in, in the way that you've just explained it may i ask this then um doctor um how does one get to understand the difference between just bad breath and and halitosis so that one can then you know start start paying attention to to the proper remedy, as, as it were. Okay, with bad breath, the person will get it at um, certain times. And if they eat, um, it will go away. With halitosis, it doesn't go away, whether you've eaten or not, whether you've rinsed the mouth or not. So with bad breath, let's say you start using thyme and fenugreek seed, over time it goes away. And then with halitosis, you can do that. If you don't look at the gut system, it will still be there. So the person's breath will be fine for like two days, unless they're rinsing and drinking at the same time to start lowering the um, infection insect, for lack of a better word. So once they start drinking it and rinsing, you will see a slight difference, but then the herbs for halitosis are much more than that because you're dealing with the gut system. So with bad breath, 
it's a matter of time and then it's over because it's either it was like gum problem, like I say, bleeding gums or they're not brushing properly or all of that. Then after some time when they start rinsing, it goes away. But with halitosis, it's not as easy as that. So it has to be a combination of and then the food as well. So it's also the same with, you know, people who have a bo body odor. Yeah. It's food, right? It, it, it's not that they don't wash properly. They can wash now. But in, in an hour's time, the odor comes back. And those are the ones who you would use impep to steam their body with. You change their diet. They're not supposed to eat certain fish. Um, so it, it, it's quite detailed. But we will go into it as we go along. Because you always need to check um, what you eat and where it comes from. Were you there during last session because we did discuss helichrysium in, in, in Bebo last week and I did mention that um, I don't think, were you? No, I, I wasn't. I wasn't. Yeah, because we were discussing helichrysium last week in Bebo um in in terms of how you can actually use it to treat body odor and i remember i didn't know that and you educated me in, in terms of that so yeah okay. interesting okay. Okay. may 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 i then ask um um both both uh you mongosi and dr lena um to perhaps at, at a later stage i know we're dealing with time now so I don't want to digress, but I'd, I'd like us to deal with oral hygiene uh, a bit more and to find herbal remedies for it. Reason being, a lot of us actually do suffer from bad breath and halitosis. And, and we, we, we don't know, we, we brush, we buy expensive toothpastes and, and things, but we never seem to, the problem never seems to go away. Um, and it can be very frustrating and embarrassing as well. Um, now, it, I think that's one of the things that we, we, we need to focus on, um, oral, oral hygiene. Um, yes, the bodily, body odors, I think we, we did, but we, we can also have a look at that maybe as well in depth, because those are the things that when you are in a social space matter a lot. Um, and um, uh, seeing as we are also encouraging Africans to be the job rather than to look for, the, for a job, um, your, your, your self-presentation, um, as it were, also matters. So if you are pitching your idea and the recipient on the other side uh, perceives you as being unhygienic, as it were, because of bad breath issues, that obviously adversely affects your your pitch. So we want you know it's things like those that uh, that that we want to look at. Um, so if possibly we can we can have a look at that uh, next time, uh, Makos. Awesome, cool. Well, was, um, if I'm not available, I will definitely give the notes. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I'd much appreciate. I'd much appreciate it. Thanks, okay. Doctor. Okay. So thyme can be used as um, an insect repellent. Um, so what you would then use is that you would prepare it using the oil preparation method. Uh, so because of the how potent it is, you might also want to go a step further and make it into a, an ointment. So you don't want to use the oil as is uh, because you can't, it's, it's a bit tricky trying to apply something that potent onto your skin. So um, you can use it as a, as a mosquito repellent and it lasts for like three, three to four hours. Um, quite natural. Uh, summer is coming up now. We're going to have to start having the rain season and more of the mosquitoes are going to start coming back. So thyme can be used as a mosquito repellent, natural uh, mosquito repellent. And then it can also be used, um, I think, uh, to, to, to relieve, um, what's this, uh, sore throat. So when, it, you, when you combine thyme and sage, uh, you can 
PPA, it's tea infusion, but we're gonna, so do, the doctor's already explained, Dr. Lina already explained that um, it has like your antiseptic uh, uh, properties and those can be uh, quite help, help, helpful in terms of relieving your, your sore throat. Uh, we're gonna discuss the usage of sage a bit later on, as a, a bit later on during our session. Is, is there any questions I'm calling in relation to the, our discussions on a time from the Facebook or the, 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 the chats? On the chats, Goko, it was just the um, it was just the, the the how to prepare which we have gone through. I don't know whether Mkulu Menzi has has anything on um, on the Facebook side uh, whether there are any questions. But be that as it may, I think you may proceed, and uh, we can take we, we'll come back when those questions uh, arise. We'll we'll come back and attend to them. Um, so yeah. Um, Kuli Menzi says we can proceed. There aren't any questions on Facebook. So yes, Kuvega uh, Makos. So the next herb that we're going to discuss is sage. Um, so this is, this is the sage. So there's varying, there's varying species in terms of um, sage, but the sage that we're going to discuss is this one that you see on the image. And it's called sal Salvia officinalis. So that's the species of, of sage that we that we will be discussing today. So it has antioxidants as well as anti-inflammatory anti agents. So besides it being also helpful for um, when you in, when you use it for 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 medicinal purposes, it's also very helpful from a spiritual context. But for purposes of, the, of today's uh, discussions, we, I, I've limited the notes that I'm going to provide to just the medicinal aspect of it. Um, I know both as healing, um, but um, we can talk about sage until, until sunrise if we were going to talk from both aspects in terms of spiritually and as well as medicinal uses. So for a sore throat, um, you can use uh, sage to, to relieve a sore throat. So what you then do is, you, as discussed uh, previously, is that you can prepare a tea infusion um, with it. Uh, so you mix it with thyme and prepare a tea, tea infusion, and you can drink that as you're experiencing a sore throat. And as well as medicinal uses. Uh, is, is there something? So for a sore throat, um, I'm getting a bit of feedback. Um, doctor, can you please mute your... Oh, thank you. Okay, so for a, a sore throat, you can prepare, as I've just mentioned, uh, a tea infusion. So... Um, you can also make a, a gurgle with it. Uh, so you, what you would then do to, if that is when you're experiencing a sore throat, you can also make a, a, a gurgle with it. You use apple cider vinegar, sage, salt, and a pinch of pine paper. Um, I didn't include the preparation method here. So um, I might need, let me make a note of it. I need to, um, make sure that I include the preparation method for your gurgle as well. I just want to make a note quickly before circulating the slides. Okay, cool. So, and then you can also use, um, you can also uh, make use of sage as a, you can prepare a, a throat spray with it. So how you would then prepare your throat spray is you would need um, sage, 
the main ingredient and then you would need peppermint uh, oils peppermint essential oils you also so the uh, honey is uh, optional um and then you will also need um, a quarter cup of uh, brandy or vodka or oh, well um at, yeah you'd also need yeah brandy or vodka and then you would um so i've included the preparation method in terms of how you prepare it but you'd combine all of them using the preparation method and then you would spray um, where, um, where you're actually feeling the, the pain in your throat. Um, um, so you do that um, a, couple of, a number of times throughout the day until the soreness subsides. subsides. So sage, uh, sage when prepared as a, as, a, as a tea infusion, it has been found to be very helpful for relieving um, hot flushes. So I'm not yet there yet, so I can't speak from a, <laughs> what's this, a point of experience, but I'm hoping, I'm hoping that there's somebody who, who has used it for this purpose to, to speak from, um, to actually add more additional information. So you would prepare a, a tea infusion and then you would drink it. It's also been found helpful for people so who are on cancer, cancer treatment, um, so those so there's some cancer treatments that actually make you have hot flashes i know it's particular particularly so for those who are taking a prostate cancer treatment um so the sage tea uh, tea infusion has been found to be helpful in terms of relieving some of the side effects that come with that medication which is uh, the one of the side effects being hot flashes so if uh, just to move along a uh, sunburn so sage can be used to relieve sunburn, the effects of sunburn. And so if you use a, an ointment, which is, which contains sage, um, which contains sage, you can, uh, it relieves some of the redness caused by uh, sun, sunburn. So like helichrysium, sage can be used as a, as a, as a disinfectant. Um, so you would burn it and then the smoke as it as it circulates the 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 air in the room it does it, it kills bacteria as well as germs that exist in the air and it can also be the smoke can also be used as a smoke as a what's this as a as a as, a, as an insect repellent so you can use uh, say the smoke of the sage you can use it to disinfect the air or as a, as a some form of a, 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 an insect repellent. Um, I'm not sure if there's anybody who wants to add on some of the uses for sage or if there's any um, questions. I can go ahead, doctor. Okay, um, you spoke about using it for the throat. <laughs> Um, it's also good for people who have tonsillitis. So they can gargle with that. And then you spoke about hot flashes. I've used it for both people who um, had a hysterectomy um, because they also have hot flashes. But I would combine it with chester berries. But then the chester berries have, um, you have to change the compound of it because not everybody can take chester berries. So how you change the compound is that you would roast the chester berries before you mix them with the sage. Um, and then they can make it into a tea and drink it and then it will help with the hot flashes. Um, um, it's also um, good for pe um, people who sweat a lot. You know, like there's, there's those people who just sweat and they would buy you a very strong deodorant, like your Mitchum and stuff like that. So if they drink it as a tea, but they also wash with it, especially oh. uh, the armpits, it helps reducing sweat. And it also helps reduce, you know, people who um, they will talk and then in like a minute they have um, a lot of saliva coming on the sides. Mm. It helps reduce that as well. Um, and then 
I used it when I wanted to stop breastfeeding my daughter. She was already four and she wouldn't stop. <laughs> mm. I heard that so, it's quite useful for stopping uh, breast, milk. breast milk from from coming out. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I, I decided to use that. But then um, it also has the contraindications because it can interfere with the absorption of iron and other minerals um, when you take it in high doses. Mm. And um, it, people with uh, uh, um, epilepsy and stuff like that, they shouldn't take sage. Even people with high blood pressure, they should take it in moderation, you know? And also when you're pregnant, you shouldn't take sage. It isn't like ingested? Yes. Because there's, yeah. yeah. You yeah, can use don't ingest it, it topically. Yes, but don't drink it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So the side, one of the side effects. So uh, Dr. Lina just touched on some of on one of the side effects, which is stopping breast milk production. Um, it, it, it depends on how you view it: cup full, or half full, or half empty. <laughs> It depends on how you, on your perspective. So if you, if you have the intention that you don't want to stop uh, milk production, then ideally you would want to refrain from uh, using sage. But if the intention is to actually stop the milk production, then it, it's it's a remedy. Um, it also lowers um, insulin levels. So when any medication that or any remedy that has the potential to lower um, your insulin levels. I always advise people to monitor the, the insulin levels throughout the day, like it, as opposed to you just checking three times a day. Okay. As opposed to you just checking your insulin levels three times a day, you'd want to more frequently check your insulin levels just to make sure that you're still keeping track. And you also might want to um, consult your doctor in terms of lowering your dosage in, or for uh, what's this for the while you're still taking the the, the, the sage for the duration and see. And again, here yeah, it's it depends on your on your perspective whether you want to see the half the glass half full or half empty, or whether you want, the intention is to lower your, your your insulin levels. So if your intention is to actually lower your insulin levels, this is quite good. But if the intention is not to do that, you want to monitor your your your, your insulin levels. Um, for as doctor just said that for people who are epileptic. You, you'd want to refrain from using sage as it may result, the usage of sage may result in, uh, in seizures and long-term usage um, may cause uh, liver damage. So the next herb that we're going to discuss is cayenne, um, cayenne pepper. I think I, I'm, I'm like, I'm, I love this <laughs> kind of, I know uh, everything is supposed to be taken in moderation, but uh, I am, I'm an addict for kind of. So uh, kind of, um, it's quite a nice herb. Like when, when winter time comes, you don't want to, to be without uh, kind of pepper in your home. Um, so it it warm it warms up your it's one of those herbs that actually uh, warms up your 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 your, your body based because it stimulates like, its circulation and so one of the things that I just wanted to mention is that a uh, cayenne pepper contains a chemical which is called capsaicin so it's it's Capsaicin is is actually that the component that is very active, and it's it's that it's it's the chemical that actually helps in terms of heal. Uh, it's responsible for the healing. I think that's the that's how I should have, I should phrase it. It's the chemical that is responsible for the healing properties of uh, cayenne pepper. So cayenne peppers are also rich in vitamin C, 
vitamin E, a, e and vitamin A and beta carotene. Um, so cayenne pepper um, is one of the key ingredients for making uh, fire cider. I shared the, the recipe for fire cider when we were discussing onions. So cayenne pepper is one of the ingredients that I use to make uh, fire cider. However, there's another method for using cayenne pepper for treating um, colds and flu. Um, so one of the so one of the methods is to mix pepper and apple cider vinegar onto hot water in, into hot water to make a, a tea infusion. Wait, I just want to fix something. So cayenne pepper uh, contains enzymes which. So if you have if you have uh, digestive problems, cayenne pepper contains enzymes which are very good in terms of relieving that indigestion. Um, another thing, uh, it's a, it's a mood enhancer, uh, cayenne pepper. It, it, you, so it has it it makes your body release endorphins, which will like make you feel good. It's like a, a feel good type of thing, a type of a, a herb. Um, Last week we discussed the herb that's also helpful in terms of uh, picking up your mood. I think it was lem uh, no, it wasn't lemon balm. Yeah, it was lemon balm. It was lemon balm, I think. It's a, it's a, it's a mood enhancer as well. So, So in terms of uh, other uses, besides when you ingest it, ingest it for to, to stimulate circulation. So this one, I don't know how other people would feel <laughs> about it, but you can put uh, cayenne pepper uh, in, in your shoes to make your feet look uh, feel warm. Uh, so you can sprinkle uh, a bit of cayenne pepper it, during winter that is. If you're somebody who suffers from really cold feet, you can sprinkle a bit of cayenne pepper onto your shoes or inside your socks to make your to make you feel warm. So if you don't like the, uh, you can also uh, what's this? Put a bit of uh, dried uh, ginger in the as well. If you if you don't want to, if you feel that it's a bit too hot, the the feeling that you that you get. So just to reduce the the hotness, you can put a bit of uh, uh, what's this? Dried dried ginger to minimize the, the hardness. So cayenne pepper can also be used as a pain reliever. So if prepared as an ointment, so yeah, if you remember the ointment making process, so you first make the oils and then take it a step further and then make the ointments. Um, for those who still want the preparation method slides, uh, please do request them via the WhatsApp group and I'll share the, the preparation method slides in terms of how you make ointments and, uh, and oils. So these are the ingredients that you would make because we had already discussed how to make ointments on the previous, I didn't go into details of the exact process and I will share, I'll reshare, I think it would be wise to just reshare the slides on your preparation methods. So these would be the ingredients that you would need, olive oil or peanut oil. So for people who are like me who have uh, nut allergies, um, please don't use peanut oil. <laughs> I, I just recently discovered that um, nut allergies even spread out to the, the type of ointment that you put on your skin like you can ha actually have a reaction from using a, a, a nut-based lotion. So please do rather use olive oil uh, instead of peanut oil. And then you can use uh, what you also need to prepare the, the pain relief ointment is the beeswax as well as wintergreen essential oils. So what you would then do is apply it either on the joints or where you're actually feeling the pain. And I think some of the commercial products, especially for sportsmen, also contain a bit of um, cayenne pepper because if you rub it on like your sore muscles and then it, it does have that effect of, of relieving the pain. Uh, are there any questions or additions before I, I move on to the side effects?
Um, um, Kulu Menzi, do we have any questions for, at, on Facebook before we move on? I'll take it good. I think we may have let's, lost. Let's move on, uh, Goko. Umkulumenzi will come on um, as and when questions arise, but you may continue. Okay, so the side effects. So you must be very careful in, when taking kind pepper because um, it may cause. Wait, I need to readjust my seating position. Um, So um, stomach convulsions, you know, and when used as a cream, you know, it, it, you, it may also cause uh, redness. Ne? And also, ne? You, it, this is, I put this one, especially with uh, that sign to say that people need to be very, very cautious when using cayenne pepper because it is hot. It is a very hot herb. So it must be used in small amount, especially if you're gonna be preparing a tincture. Like one, one, your head will be buzzing. Your head will be buzzing, especially if it's in a, in a tincture. Can you imagine like a potent dose of, um, of kind pepper? Because tinctures are very potent. They, they're very potent. So can you imagine like one drop too extra? What it will actually do? Like your head will be buzzing. So you must, be, you must use uh, cayenne pepper in very small amounts. Also, you must remember that when, when handling cayenne pepper, you must remember to wash your hands because exposure to sensitive parts like your, um, ooh, your eyes, yes, like your eyes, it's, that could be a bit, um, it, it will irritate your eye and it's very uncomfortable. So when handling kind pepper, you must be very careful and you must remember that to wash your heart, your eyes. No, not your eyes, your hands. Sorry. Your hands. The last herb. So when I discuss this herb, aloe vera, né? I almost feel like in as much as it is abundant here in South Africa, um, I almost feel like people do not really understand understand this herb in a sense that they they don't really know what its uses are, you know, and sometimes they don't really understand um, um, some of the the side effects. For lack of a better word, I'll just say side effect the effects that the, this herb has on your body. So, and they just randomly use it, you know, without paying caution in terms of what the herb actually does. So alo aloe vera is, so it's one of those plants that you mostly find in dry regions. And yeah, and the, the, the leaves, they contain a gel. So inside when you cut it, they contain a gel and that gel is mostly made up of water. And then the other components uh, are just like, minor but mostly it's just water and so aloo contains vitamin a c e and b12 so it's not the only vitamins that you would find in aloe vera but it's the most the ones that are more high those are the ones that are actually listed so aloo is also has folic acids enzymes minerals and sugar I didn't want to list the what's this, the different types of sugars as that would be a discussion on its own because I'd have to explain what each type of sugar is, is actually good for. Um, and that's a discussion. Like I feel like all the herbs that we that we discussed today, we can have an entire session just discussing those herbs. And today we've just merely brushed or touched on the surface in terms of what these herbs are able to do. So aloo can be used to treat burns, wounds, and skin irritation. So, the, so what you would then do, you can take the herb as is, cut it, and then the gel that actually comes out from the alley, you can apply directly on the wound or the burn or the skin irritation. Um, you can let, let it dry on and then 
because that when as it dries that's part of the healing process but if it, it gets too if it's a bit uncomfortable for you you can wash it off and then reapply it uh, reapply the, the the gel so aloe is good at relieving constipation as well um it contains it has lag it's a it's a laxative it's a natural laxative and a purging it has a, a pur, what's this purgative as well yeah laxative or a purgative so you can also use alu for uh, skin treatment not skin treat skin treatment but for oral hygiene so it if you use it like as a mouthwash you know it it prevents tooth decay and, and some gum disease this would include your gingivitis and it's also very helpful in terms of when you've got you know when you've got canker sores like your those mouth sores so if you wash your mouth with uh, uh alu it's it's very helpful in terms of healing 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 those sores so for skin treatments this is for the ladies uh, or not just the ladies because men have become uh, very cautious in terms of their, their skin and taking care of the skin lately <laughs> so um it's it's a it's a nice beauty beauty thing because it stops aging for those who want to forever look young uh, the usage of Ali has been it, it firms up your skin you know and it it moisturizes your, your skin and it also slows down the the aging process um yeah is it yeah um is are there any questions ne, in terms of alu before we we move to the side effect also dr lena earlier explained that she also uses this for um for for, for women who who pregnant women who are suffering from um uh, constipation um but you know what when it comes to that i would advise you to seek a uh, professional help like actually go to a doctor because some people but i'll discuss that when we when we talk about um um the side effects um just before i i just before uh dr lena there's a question, um, but this one refers to pepper, and I, and, and I just think that, you know, we should go, go to it. The question is, could I use pepper for an ointment, or is this too, too strong for skin ointments? Mm, I think I did mention that for pain relief, it's, it, that it's actually administered as an ointment. So you take it as a, like you apply it on your skin as an ointment on the area where it is actually sore. Hence, I didn't put the, the, the preparation method for the ointment because I said I'll reshare the slides that deal with the preparation method because we had discussed it in one of our previous sessions in terms of how to prepare oils and ointments. Okay, I think that answers it. Um, Dr. Lena? Oh, okay. I actually wanted to explain what I meant when I say I use it for pregnant women with pounds. They don't ingest it. What um, you spoke about, you cut the aloe, there's a gel. That gel is antifungal, it's antibacterial, it's also um, antiviral. So usually they would be constipated during pregnancy and then they start getting hemorrhoids. What I suggest is that they cut it and then they put it on goss and they pad with it where the piles are. So mm -hmm. because it's anti-inflammatory, it reduces the inflammation. And then it, 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 it helps increase the blood, um, 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 what is it, circulation. Because piles, it's, it, um, we'll go into that. So the blood is not circulating, it, 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 it inflames. So when it gets that gel um, and sometimes i would say put it in the fridge uh, a bit so that it can be cold and then you pad with it so then when it gets into contact with the piles it starts to reduce the inflammation it helps with the blood uh, flow blood circulation and that's how it helps them to alleviate the pain 
of, of the hemorrhoids. So not that they drink it because it, it's a laxative. Imagine you're pregnant, um, you're drinking aloe and you've got piles. It's not a good thing. Mm. Um, Queen Menzi would like to say something. Go ahead, Ken. I think he's just sorting, trying to sort out his audio. Mkulu um, Asubuzwa, just unmute. Uh, uh, connect your audio first and then unmute. He's unmuted. Mm -mm. His, his. Yeah, I think he's having a challenge. The audio time. is a bit of a challenge, but uh, continue, Goko. We'll, we'll, whilst uh, o o King Menzi works on his, on his audio. So uh, I don't know if the question was directed to myself or Dr. Lina, but the hand was raised while Dr. Lina was speaking. Uh, so what Mkulu Menzo wants to know is that how often can, can alu be applied on the skin? Um, it's an interval. It depends on what he's referring to. Is it a skin that has a sting or a sore? Or um, we just need to unpack it. But for, 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 for people with hemorrhoids, I would say it, it intervals. So once the swelling goes away and you can relieve yourself, take it off. And then you put it again. Um, I always advise that they do it at night because then it works throughout the night while they're sleeping. So in the morning, they feel much better. They are able to go to the toilet and all of that. And I've also used it for um, some men with prostate cancer because it then becomes a combination of the prostate and them being unable to go to the toilet, resulting in hemorrhoids. So I'll, I, I also say the same thing to them. Cut the aloe, put it in glass, um, pad with it. Let it be there on your bum and help with the inflammation and the blood circulation. And once you feel a bit better, you take it off. But sometimes you find that it's severe, severe cases. Then I will say change it every two hours. Change it every two hours. Because it, it, it's in most people's yards and they just overlook it and they don't know. And then sometimes I would say use a combination of aloe and witch hazel for, for, for hemorrhoids. Because um, like you say, with the, the, the skin and the mouth ulcers, which hazel works exactly the same. All right. There's a follow-up question uh, by Mkulumenzi. Is aloe for hair growth or just hair health? How should it be prepared? Um. For for me personally, um, um Kulumenzi, I would have to uh, return to you. I'll probably send the the response to that question a bit later on because I've I've not I'm not one who really um, try to understand how people use it for hair growth and everything. My focal point has been on skincare and in terms of ingesting it. But I've I know there's people who actually use it for for hair treatment as well. I'm not sure if there's anybody else in the group that is able to answer that question. Alu being used for hair growth or hair treatment. I know it can be very good in terms of healing the scalp. Uh, what's this? The scalp uh, where you've got issues with your scalp. It can be quite good. Uh, I've seen a lot of people that uh, have undergone that undergone that treatment and it actually works works out for them so uh the side effects for for alu um alu can um can cause stomach cramps and you know i wanna stress this alu is a very strong laxative it's very very strong uh, I would advise people to try if you if you're having 
um, issues in terms of uh, indigestions and whatnot, rather try the other herbs first, you know, uh, rather try the other herbs first and Ali should not be like your first go to go to herb, you know, there's, there's hierarchies in, in, in these things. But if you're going to use alu in terms of a, as a laxative, let it be your last option because it's very strong. And I, like, the, I, I don't know, but I've seen how it actually works. It can be a bit too harsh, you know? Hence I say, if you're going to use it as a laxative. Um, so if you're going to use it as a laxative, rather like advice from like a doctor as well like you can also go to your dr lena's and and dr is it, is it dr nyarai that we have on the group dr lena dr um, i don't see dr Nyarai. Uh, on in the group yes it's dr nyarai she didn't join yes. here but she didn't uh, join in today she she's missing the session dr yeah. So I would rather just don't use it as a, as a first go-to option. Um, Long-term usage of, uh, of alu um, can cause a, Continue, Gok. Uh, oh, sorry. I was, <laughs> yeah, sorry, no, I was just... Dr. Lina, um, her battery uh, ran, ran out. Um, so she's dropped off because her battery is flat. Um, sad to lose her there, but um, yeah, we are at the end of the session, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, um, so long term usage of alu can cause liver damage, and high doses so, doses of um, alu may cause kidney failure. So, when, when using alu, you must bear those in mind. Uh, Everything um, in moderation. Everything in moderation. Indeed. Too much of a good thing is bad for you. That's the, the maxim uh, to, to, to bear in mind. Um, there's, a, there's a comment um, <coughs> from Aran, Aranza. Um, and uh, Aranza suggests that freshly harvest and blend the aloe to make it like a gel, which is um, exactly what... Uh, that's an appropriate uh, suggestion, though. Mm. I, I, do we have any additions um, or questions? Because we are at the end of um, uh, the session. Um, Kulumensi, do we have any questions from the uh, Facebook uh, Facebook page? Because we are at the end of the session, and uh, yeah. Oh, so. In terms of anti-aging properties, and so in 